Welcome back to my TV program, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing book five in Mark Greeney's Gray Man series um, called Back Blast. So, Let's check out the cover first. You know I love graphic design and cover illustrations. We always go over that first with every book. So this is typical of a Gray Man book. Well, it's actually typical of most thrillers nowadays where they've got the silhouette of a dude running away from us and some sort of exotic locale that he's running through. That is the basic cover of 90% of thrillers on the market nowadays. I don't know why they're going with that, but they do. I think it's cool. I like it. I mean, I've got no complaints other than it's uh, overused. Um, but it's a good cover. And uh, I've got the other books in the series. All of the spines match. You've seen me in previous reviews hold up all the books and all the spines look good together. It's just a good, a well-put-together series all the way. And if you want to... Um, YouTube and watch the trailer for the Gray Man movie starring, um, who's the fuck is that guy? Starring Ryan Gosling. Just, um, type into YouTube, uh, the Gray Man trailer and it'll come up. You can watch it. It's a cool trailer. So the first Gray Man book is being made into a movie starring Ryan Gosling. And I think it's coming out this summer. Hell, it might already be out. I don't even know. Um, but you can go ahead and watch my review of the original Gray Man novel by typing in Gray Man and my last name into your search bar, and that video will magically appear upon your YouTube television screen. Anyway, let's talk about book five, Backblast. Opening scene. It's got a dynamite. In, in fact, I think Mark Greeny writes some of the most dynamic opening scenes of anybody. I love him. I actually look forward to seeing what he's going to do next. This one opens up in Washington, D.C. The Gray Man is no longer traveling through exotic locales. Which is maybe the only negative I have about this book. This book stays in Washington, D.C. for the most part all the time. Um, and... It starts in Washington, D.C., in the ghetto, and some there's some thugs on the street, and um, the gray man uh, has traveled incognito through the ports, up the Chesapeake Bay, however it is you get into Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area, and he's been smuggled himself on a boat. He smuggles himself on a boat most places he goes, actually. And um, he ends up in D.C., with no weapons, just sort of like a trench coat. And um, he's walking through the ghetto on purpose because this is how he's going to get weapons. I thought this was cool. There's some thugs on the street and they try to attack him and rob him. But of course he's the gray man and he kicks their fucking ass and takes their weapons and money from them. And now he's an armed, now he's armed. And I thought that was cool. I thought that was a cool way to not only show that the gray man was just a badass again, like we didn't know from the previous four books, but that he, if he's going to steal from someone, he's going to be like Robin Hood and he's going to steal from the bad guys and take their weapons and money. And then he can have weapons and money. And uh, it was just kind of cool. But anyway, he's traveled to Washington DC because he wants to sort of exact vengeance upon all those people that have been chasing him around the world for the previous four books. And we, as readers, we still don't know why the U.S. government is chasing the gray man. Well, now is our chance to get some of those mysteries somewhat solved in this book. Um, because, yeah, we begin to learn his backstory of why he is hunted by the U.S. government. And he finds and interrogates old friends and enemies one by one. It's just great. That's pretty much the 
basic plot of the story. His enemies are trying to catch him, to stop him, because they don't want him to learn the truth. He is finding his old friends and enemy one by one, getting pieces of the truth from each one. Um, Zack Hightower is one of the characters that has sort of drifted in and out of the Gray Man series here and there. He shows up. He's one of the people that sort of knows why the Gray Man is as badass as the Gray Man in, is why the government is hunting him, and why he is so dangerous. And, um, plus there's a whole host of other characters just that we get to meet. Um, the Gray Man, actually, in this book, suffers some real-world injuries. Uh, you know, and he doesn't magically heal from them, like, say, James Bond would or something. I mean, these injuries ap actually hamper his progress as he tries to, um, because he's been sort of like a... A fantasy superhero in a lot of the previous books. Um, now, he's been injured in some of the previous books, too. But um, this one, the injury just takes on a little bit more, um, I don't know, say... It just, it just uh, changes the plot slightly. I guess that's all I'm going to say. Um, and like I said, all of this takes place in Washington, D.C. locales, Maryland, Baltimore, places like that. Oh! My favorite locale is the, the ghetto apartment that he finds to live in and how he finagles his way into that. That was a great scene. And I like the ghetto apartment because he can't stay at the Ritz-Carlton. Well, he probably maybe could have. But he decides to be, a, he, he wants to keep things on the down low. And so he, how oh, the apartment is just, just, the one that he chooses is not a good apartment. But anyway, actually it's not even an apartment. It's more of like a basement room with dripping pipes and cement floors. Anyway, um, so now there is a little bit of international travel and a few exotic locales, but those we only get to see through the eyes of some flashback scenes to when the gray man was working for the government and things were sort of going sideways. And this is the... This is, and I'm not going to give any details away, but these flashbacks kind of let us know what it was that the Gray Man may have done or not done to get himself uh, chased by the FBI and the CIA and the uh, Secret Service and the Maryland State Police and the, uh, you know, the Washington, D.C. County Jail Guards. I mean, everybody's after the Gray Man. Nobody wants the Gray Man around, and so... um we start to get some answers in this one. It's full of a lot of action. It's full of a lot of great set pieces and action. Explosions, gunfights, many, many, many chase scenes. Um, I especially love the ones at the beginning with the thugs. Because there's several. There's a couple of run-ins with different thugs that he has as he's living in this ghetto area. It's so just a... It's a different book. It's, it's a, I think it's it's a little bit different in tone in that I thought the first four were sort of like really sort of male fantasies like the Jack Reacher, like the Gray Man is just the most badass. He's never going to lose. Um, Jack Reacher, uh, you know, if you read a Jack Reacher book, it's like the Jack Reacher's, he's the most witty, he's the most funny, he's the biggest, the strongest. We get a little bit of sense of that with the Gray Man through the first four books. I think this is the first one that really sort of maybe brings him back to reality, or at least it brought my perception of him a little bit more back into a reality state where, you know, maybe this guy can be hurt, maybe this guy does have some feelings. Although I don't like him to show us either. I think it was book two where he was about to assassinate a dude and he showed some compassion and it just, it, it made things for the rest of the book awkward. Um, maybe, do I want my gray man to just be a cold hearted killer or do I want my gray man to have a soft side? I, I don't know yet. I don't know. Anyway, another great, another great, great, um, Entry into the Gray Man series. This is book five. I will give this a solid. I don't think it's my favorite, but it certainly had some different things in it. And I think I'm going to give this a good 9.5 out of 10. Uh, and I can't wait to read book six.